What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right, this is a video request from one of my subscribers. I didn't forget. Um, I asked him to remind me, but uh, when I did the George Mikan video, it popped in my mind that I remember promising to do a, a, a video about Dominique Wilkins. And uh, this one is long overdue. Um, I've done a couple of videos talking about Dominique Wilkins. Uh, I remember doing one saying, you know, he wasn't just a dunker. But uh, I'm going to reemphasize this because it is something that I've noticed. Uh, he doesn't get the respect that he should for whatever reason. He just doesn't get the respect that he should uh, from contemporary fans. He got it in the era that he played in for the most part, but I would say since the post-Jordan era, you've seen increasingly, uh, well, you know what, even in the Jordan era, when he was left off that 50 of all 50 team, that was disrespectful. Okay. Very disrespectful for him and Alex English. And I'll do a video on Alex English later on, maybe this weekend or something. I can't even put a timetable on it. But I'm going to do a video about him. But let me say something too, just, just briefly, uh, just to change the subject slightly. Um, I don't know what's going on with some of these trolls out here, man. But some of you dudes are extreme cowards, man. The, the new tactic now is for Coward assholes. Maybe this is people I blocked or whatever. Or whatever. Trolls. What you do now is you create an account. You create a troll account. Leave me a fucked up comment, right? <laughs> then you'll delete the comment and then delete your profile. So that I can see your comment, but I can't reply to you. Nor can I go to your page and reply to you. See, all you motherfuckers are such cowards, man. Such cowards. Oh, my God, man. Y'all some bitch-ass motherfuckers, man. But it's all good. I'm glad that I had to force you to go through such efforts to try to one-up me. You know what I'm saying? But you're still blocked. You know what I'm saying? So I win. I win. So anyway, back to Dominique Wilkins. Um, yeah, he's not, he's not respected in the way that he should, man. Like I mentioned, he was left on the 50th anniversary team back in 1996. It was much talk about why wasn't he on that team? You know what I'm saying? Um, also many people just have the perception of him as just being a dunker. Like all he did was dunk and you're not going to score well over 26,000 points in the NBA if you're just a dunker, because people are going to be able to game plan and uh, take that away from you. So you have to have other things to rely on in your game. You know what I'm saying? If you're just a dunker, you know, nah, he, he was no Harold Miner. This was no Stromile Swift. This was no Darius Miles. This was a guy that became an all around complete basketball player. Now, when he came into the NBA, I think he came in in 82. Two, I think it was. When he came to the NBA in 82, no, he didn't really have a jump shot. He didn't really have a jump shot, but he developed into a very good mid-range jump shooter. Okay? And in the latter parts of his career, he actually became a pretty decent three-point shooter. So this is a guy that really worked hard on his game, really expanded his game, Okay, and uh, he developed into like a really great, a really, really good, I'd say, mid-range jump shooter. He had a great bank shot. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, he had a great, you know, like I said, the guy was tremendous inside, of course. Power dunker, we all know that. But he had a great up and under. And um, he was sometimes... An unstoppable force. You got to remember, this is a guy that led the NBA in scoring in 85-86. So this is a guy that was one of the best scorers in the history of the NBA. And one of the best scorers, I would say, as far as being a prolific scorer, from about 85 to 90, more or less... And definitely from 85 to 93, 
he was probably in the top two to three as far as scoring the NBA. Behind only Jordan and sometimes Carl Malone. But this guy was a tremendous basketball player. And um, we saw his competitive edge. We saw what he was capable of in that epic duel that he had with Larry Bird in that 88 series when they were going tit for tat, back and forth. Now, Bird's team was able to defeat Dominique's team in that series, but Dominique outscored Bird, I think, 47 to 34 or something like that. But it was a tremendous contest. I think Bird went like 9 of 10 from the floor in that, in that fourth quarter or something like that. I mean, Bird just went off in that, in that fourth quarter. But Dominique Wilkins was a great basketball player. Okay. Um, he could be very good on defense. Okay. Um, I remember there were some things that he got knocked for that in today's context doesn't make sense. I remember when he was playing, people said, well, why is a guy that athletic, six foot eight and 210 pounds, only averaging seven rebounds per game? But you never hear people say, well, why is LeBron James, six eight, six nine, two fifty, 250, whatever he is, only averaging seven rebounds per game? I don't hear the same argument. I've made the same argument. I've said... Well, if Michael Jordan was six foot six, really six foot four and a half or six foot three quarters, whatever, if Michael Jordan is less than six five, right, in bare feet, uh, 200 pounds, why was he able to average over six rebounds, being a perimeter guy, but LeBron James only averaged seven rebounds and was a poor offense, and is a poor offensive rebounder. But Dominique Wilkins gets criticized for averaging seven rebounds. It doesn't make sense. Um... And Dominique Wilkins also never really played with a lot of great players. You know what I'm saying? Like, Dominique Wilkins' individual brilliance alone pretty much led those Hawks teams to success in the mid to late 1980s. And um, he never really played with any great players. You know, it, you know. I mean, not to knock him, but his – the best point guard that he played with that I can think of on the top of my head, what, uh, Doc Rivers? So he never really played with a, another great player. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even with Dominique Wilkins with the Spurs, his time with the Spurs, he played that season when Dave Robinson was derailed with the injury and just the year before Tim Duncan got there. So he never got the opportunity like a Magic Johnson, like a Larry Bird, like a Michael Jordan, like a Kobe Bryant, like a Shaquille O'Neal, like any of these players. Even Charles Barkley uh, had the opportunity to play with great players, even though they were aging at the time. No, Kevin Johnson wasn't wasn't aging at the time, so I can't say that. Um, unlike these guys, Dominique never had the opportunity to play with another great player. And Dominique Wilkins also was able to do something that – uh, nobody has ever done in the history of NBA, and that is really, to be honest with you, nobody's ever really done it. Kevin Durant might be able to do it. We'll see. But to come back successfully from a devastating injury like an Achilles tendon rupture, and you got to remember, I think that injury happened in January of 1992, um, a long, long time ago, when we didn't have the advances in, in medicine that we have now. Um Dominique Wilkins was able to come up, come back from an injury and be second in the league in scoring behind Michael Jordan. Uh, I think he averaged 29.9 points per game that next year, 92, 93 season. Nobody saw that coming. Nobody. There were many people that thought Dominique's career might have been over. Or if he did come back, he was just going to be a shell of himself. Uh, I mean, he'd already been slightly declining athletically for a couple years anyway. I remember there was that famous spaz dunk he had in that 91 All-Star game, which was one of the clear signs that I think it was a tomahawk dunk that he attempted, but he spazzed on it. And that was one of the first signs that he was starting to lose some of his explosive leaping ability. Uh, so people were starting to phase Dominique out, but you know what I'm saying? Um, he was able to have a great comeback year in 1993. Um and uh, for the rest of his career, he still was a great potent scorer. Of course, he started slowly diminishing as a basketball player, but he did have a couple of years when he played overseas. 
And that kind of actually took down some of his NBA totals because he was able to stay in the league. He probably would have had over well over 27,000 points, maybe 28,000 points, uh, and be higher on the all-time list. Let's look, let's look at Dominique Wilkins. Um, let's look at Dominique Wilkins for a, time, for a minute. Nine-time NBA All-Star, the 1986 All-NBA First Team, four-time All-NBA Second Team, two-time All-NBA Third Team, NBA All-Rookie First Team, 83, NBA Scoring Champion, 1986, two-time NBA Slam Dunk Contest Champion, 85, and 1990. And, of course, there are some people who say that he got cheated out of a Slam Dunk Championship against Michael Jordan in Chicago in 1988. I'm not going to say that's, you know, I'm not going to agree with that. But it is what it is. His number 21 is retired by the Atlanta Hawks. And he was a, a EuroLeague champion in 1996, the EuroLeague Final Four MVP in 96, the Greek All-Star Game MVP in 96, the Greek Cup winner in 1996, Greek Cup Finals top scorer in 1996, Greek Cup Finals MVP in 1996. And he was the SEC Player of the Year in 1981. And for his career, he averaged 24.8 points. Uh, 6.7 rebounds, 2.5 assists per game. And, of course, he's in the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. And um, Dominique Wilkins played with not only the Atlanta Hawks, but the Los Angeles Clippers, the Boston Celtics, the San Antonio Spurs, and the Orlando Magic. And, of course, he played overseas as well. Um, but Dominique Wilkins was a tremendous force and one of the great players of all time. And he, people need to start putting some respect on the name of Dominique Wilkins, the human highlight film, arguably. Uh, many people feel like the torch has been passed to Vince Carter, but some people still say Dominique Wilkins, arguably, is the greatest dunker of all time. <laughs>